one thing is for sure. We are not done with this whole fuel source. Uh, we're in a state of flux sort of right now with no one has settled on a, a fuel source for the next generation, right? I mean, we've got electric, we've got lithium power, we've got potential solid state coming up, we've got you know, traditional gasoline, diesel, right? And then we've got people talking about hydrogen. And now I, we've got Porsche coming out yesterday saying, right. sorry, sorry, Porsche <laughs> <laughs> coming out yesterday <laughs> saying um, they're working on a synthetic fuel source. Um, do they call it e-fuel? Is that right, Jay? I think they do, yeah. Um, I'm looking at it now. It's, um, yeah, and now it's, here's the deal. The synthetic fuels are very important, and, and they are. Um, I think, and before we get into some of these details, um, there's, they basically say there's no byproduct, and uh, it's much cleaner, Um Full production will be starting, and they expect a CO2 reduction of around 85%. That right there. Okay. So, and, so, and that's a big deal. So remember, okay, a, a carbon reduction of 85%. Mm-hmm. As compared to, I'm, I'm guessing, regular gasoline, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't know that for sure. It's kind of an assumption I'm making, but okay. No, Let's, it, it is. Um, and, of course, what they, wanted, they, what they want people to understand is that, and we've talked about this in prior podcasts, and you know, the, the Toyota CEO and other automotive CEOs have come right out and said, hey, or Bosch's CEO comes right out and says that we're not backing this, this saying that electric vehicles are completely carbon neutral. Right. And I think what Porsche's approach is, is to giving you more, a more of a realistic approach yep. to becoming carbon neutral by a specific date and so having all these options out there with alternative fuels i think is extremely smart and and honestly i feel that the synthetic fuel is more achievable than being all electric yeah. from an infrastructure standpoint and just it, supposedly this stuff will run in every car well out there that that's a yeah, yeah that and that's another they're going to start testing in 2022 so that's you know, right around the corner. Now, for those of you, let's go back to this 85% reduction in carbon emissions again. Okay. So for those mm-hmm. of you that go right now, like I, you know, let's say you drive a Tesla or whatever and you're going, well, yeah, but it's all electric and I have no carbon emissions. We have many times on this program and it's not just our opinion. We have cited, like Jay just said, you know, the head at Bosch, the head at Toyota, all these people are coming out and going, you know, not so fast. Like that power comes from somewhere. We have podcasted on that. We did an episode on where your electricity comes from. If you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard about what happened to Texas during the recent winter storms, you know, they have power. It's not just, you know, it's usually a a mix, right? So some of it in Texas, a lot of it comes from burning natural gas. There can be solar power. There can be wind power. There can be hydroelectric power. There can be coal. It could be burning of coal. It could be a lot of things, okay? Okay. But there is, there are carbon emissions created from the production of that electricity on some level. On yeah. some levels, I guess. Levels. So it is not zero. Okay. So what 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 Porsche is saying is we're going to be competitive with whatever those emissions are on the EV side, which makes sense to me because, you know, you have companies like again like Toyota who maybe aren't going all in on first generation EV batteries because of that very reason, because they're expensive and they're volatile and they're, they're, you know, it's just, they start to degrade quickly and all that. Well, not only that, you, you, you've got the car enthusiast out there. This right here gives the car enthusiast the opportunity to still have an internal combustion engine to be able to tweak that thing. Um, and you know, for the gearheads out there, this is really exciting. 
Now, they're running these things already in some of their performance vehicles, and but it takes a lot of this is and you got everybody has to understand. It takes a lot of technology in order for a vehicle to run on this stuff. Now, we're not there yet from the at the consumer <laughs> level, but this is why Porsche is doing this. And again, this relates back to a conversation that we have with our good friend Chuck Lynch over at AERA about the technology from the racing industry becoming the norm in uh, at the consumer level us as auto uh, owners and 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 buyers it trickles down all tr- that massive expense it. that they dump into race teams they use on some levels for R&D for the consumer stuff right right while we're watching you know NASCAR take Ricky left Bobby. turns yep. yeah yeah take left turns all day long in our mind, we're watching a competition because that's what it's entertaining for us. But honestly, those guys that are part of that team, those engine professionals, those guys that are tuning and trimming and doing all of those things, that's really live testing that they are doing for future vehicles that you may buy. You, you should look at it in that perspective and be supportive of the racing industry, guys. It's um, it's a, it's a lot bigger deal. It's not just entertainment. It again, that technology will trickle down into what you own at some point. It already has, and you just don't right. You, you don't you take yeah. it for granted because you just hop in it every day. So, but this and you is know, cool. I just had this realization, Jay. We are we are so so. If you think about it, mm-hmm. these e fuels, it's. It can be some of it can be consumer waste. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't yeah. know. They're running on oils or trash or whatever, right? But it's synthetic, man-made, right? It's mm-hmm. probably recycled from something, or it will be. So we are one step closer to Mister Fusion. You know, Doc yes. Brown powered the DeLorean and uh, yes. Back to the Future. Yes, right? absolutely, man. Run, we are. We- <laughs> yes. That's I mean, it, man. It's yeah. It's kind of headed there, is it not? It it is really headed there, man. I think that we are. It's you know if if you go back over the last thirty years and think about what you know what movies have been put out and you know just futuristic stuff. Look where we're at now, and you go back. And go oh, that was in Back to the Future. <laughs>